Alright guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I've actually got a pre-production model by WPL. This is a D12, which is a Suzuki Carrier ST90, I think it's from the 1980s, if I'm wrong, I'll correct myself down at the bottom of the screen. This is actually supposed to be the edition for the Chinese market. There will be one coming out later on either this year or next year for the worldwide market mainly aimed for drifting this one's mainly more for on-road and scale appearance as you can see because of it being made for the chinese market the box is all in chinese and like I said, this is a pre-production model, so there is stuff in here will not be coming when it's released. All right, let's get into the box. I have opened it up and I have charged the batteries, so. So. First things first is your instruction manual. Again, because it's for the Chinese market, it is all in Chinese. And I am not, well, I've only got a limited amount of knowledge of reading Chinese, so. Uh, you get in the box, you'll get your charger cable which in my case I've already took out the bag and used you'll be getting one battery in the box and because being pre-production I got a second one in this you'll also be getting a, a bag of parts and accessories mainly like the clip on headache bar stickers If I can get to them, the wing mirrors, which, to be honest, are quite cool little things. Let me bring it close to the camera. Come on, focus, please. So, it's molded plastic, and then there is like a little metal insert, which literally just clips in. So you've got a nice reflective mirror. And there is two of them. I know I know there is. And then there's also some little clear lenses which I believe go onto the side. It because of it being pre-production. Mine came with a spare gearbox, spare hubs, spare front lower arms, and some more link parts. So in a little bit, because I've got having a spare gearbox, I will crack it open and let you see what's inside, or what the gear ratio is like on. Moving on to the truck itself. Comes with the comes with the standard WPL controller, I believe. I've only had one of these before. And now the truck. I did put out on the official WPL Facebook group what people would like to know like wheelbase or the size comparison is to other one tenth scale stuff moving on to the Facebook questions there is people asking wheelbase and axle width so the wheelbase itself is 190 mils 
track width is 135 mils so it is the same rear axle as pretty much every other truck WPL makes same wheelbase I believe as the C14 or 24 yep yeah. so let me pop on that side the so same wheelbase as these which may it's making a lot of people question the size difference of that is this actually one tenth scale so let me just grab it from off screen my one tenth scale Vauxhall Astra touring car for size comparison and I'll put up on the screen now a photo of my real car next to a Honda Aki. You can see this is actually roughly a little bit taller than an actual car. So my car in real life is actually just a tiny bit taller than a full size K truck. All right. Let me compare it to, what else can I compare it to? Uh, well, what did I just do with the, oh, I'll pull it back on the shelf. Compare it to a one tenth scale crawler. Here's my HGP 407 modified. So, of course, this sits taller than the K truck. And size wise, or length wise, I mean, rear wheels are lined up together. That's roughly about accurate to real life. So, to put everyone's questions whether or not it is an actual one tenth scale, and I've seen these in real life. I reckon it's almost perfect. The height is just a little bit taller. So William asks, where does the battery fit? And this is the one gripe I have about it. The stock batteries are 500 ma lithium ion, I believe. Camera focus, please. Yeah, camera's not one in the play ball. But that's the stock battery for it. Where the stock battery fits, is if I pop it on its backside, you see where the spare wheel is? There is actually like a little clasp underneath. Let's get your finger under and pop it up. So the battery goes in there. And the only problems I have is Oh, I've got two main problems here. Is the connector. WPL, please, please switch to JSD connectors. My proper, ba my full size battery charger comes with a JSD adapter. It's more common with like the little 10 amp ESCs. It's every Nitro I know uses a JSD connector for the back or for the power source. So switch over to JSD, please. It makes life a hell of a lot easier for us. Secondly, the size of the battery tray. So I believe this may be the smallest one that I have, or oh, I have got smaller, but they're like sealed inside vehicles. But that is the smallest one I use for going between mobile trucks. The next smallest one I own is that. An Overlander battery. That will not fit 
in that battery tray. The battery tray pretty much stops about there, right in the middle of the axle. So about there in the middle of the axle. So you can't get any other batteries to fit in there without cutting the back firewall. So you're stuck with 500 ma, which I will do. I'll take it outside in a little bit and do laps up and down the road and time how long it takes to drain one of these from full. I would prefer it if there was a bigger battery tray so you can run your own batteries. Next question from Phil is light kits. I believe it will be possible to put a full light kit in it. Front ones, these two light up already when you, well, the standard WPL flashing lights before you sync the controller. These bottom two ones is quite actually, oh, it's quite accessible to put lights in and it looks like it's already got little light buckets. On the rear side, the tail lights, I've got two individual light buckets or like little slots to put LEDs. And these side markers up here look like there's also a slot to put an LED. So I don't know if WPL is going to be releasing a light kit for it. But I do believe with a little bit of soldering and wiring you will be able to add a light kit to it. Motor size, it is a motor size, it's a 260. Moving on to another question from Phil. Size and weight, I'll add as a text bar along the bottom. Loading capacity, I'll try that out. Smoothness of gears, All right? I'll crack open my spare gearbox and I'll let you have a little look. All right. So I've cracked open the gearbox. It's well lubed. That is the internal gears. Yes, they are plastic, but knowing there is people out there who will end up bringing out metal geared versions of this gearbox sooner or later. Because I'm possibly gonna 3D model another variant of this gearbox to take a small brushless system and use some gear pinions as sort of like the drive between so it's just two gears so your main gear and then your drive gear that is my plan for this one later on is to try and get to go brushless and go fast all right next question i'm not going to try and pronounce your name i think it's either lucas but it's going to is us to show the front suspension in more detail and so in the rear it's the standard leaves a little bit a little bit springy that's all i can say but i've been told by ed that spare wheel on the underneath you should be able to unscrew it and inside you should be able to put I believe it may be the metal wheel weights. I'm not fully sure, but I'll give it a shot to add a bit more weight into the rear. So for the front suspension, let me just take the body off. 
and the body, first time doing this, I believe the body is mounted by one, two, three, four, five, six screws along the chassis frame. I, and I've been asked multiple, or oh, a couple times, can you fit this body onto another frame to make it four wheel drive? Which I know is going to be a big thing. I know people will want to try and make it a crawler version. So I'm going to take it on myself and 3D print or 3D model some adapter plates and pop it up onto Thingiverse. I believe it will fit very well. Okay, so the rear bed is four screws. So actually you can see, oh, let me find them screws before I lose them. There. As you can see, that is the battery tray. The battery wire appears to be running along the frame. And there is a, what appears to be like just a little retention retention bit to keep it in there. So, I don't know where about the front comes, how the front comes off completely. So, let's have a little look. This, literally I've only had it out the box once to get charge up the batteries and I gave it a little drive. I've not actually teared into this properly, so I don't know how the cab comes off. Oh, Alright, just pulls up forwards. And there's a little connector going from the board to the front headlights. And that's off. So, for the chassis, The bearings up at the front, the suspension is a, what appears to be like a wire rod between some screws. So I think possibly, uh, no, it's a it is a solid wire rod going all the way around. It goes underneath the motor and then back up. I was going to say you could possibly twist it or I don't know whether or not you can take it out and flip it so the front end sits a bit lower. But one modification I want to do is do a mono shock across the top as there is two holes here which I reckon a PC motherboard standoff would fit in. Let me let me grab my full size drift car. Oh no, not full size. Let me grab my one temp scale drift car. I've got my Sakura D4. So what I'm talking about putting a PC motherboard is to try and do a mono shock up at the front, which allows your front suspension suspension to free roll. and then also still compress under shock, which actually ha helps it handle a little bit better for drifting. So my plan is to try and make it driftable. <coughs> but at the moment, because the tires which come on it are actually rubber and the spare on the back is a functional spare that is also rubber as well. People ask whether or not other bodies can fit onto this. So let me grab my other C24. All right. My other C24 body from the mini truck with possible Let me sit 
down with possible modifications to the both the rear could sit onto it the rear bed I believe you'll have to mm, cut out the stub on the bottom of the bed that will need to go and this may have to be chopped a bit so it sits lower spare wheels gonna have to go and some holes in the frame will have to be drilled to get the uh, to get the um, mounting points hooked up properly you'll also need to cut a bit out of the bed here to clear it which mine have already or well, mine has already got that done because of it being on a drift chassis anyway so back will fit back in the front the front front will fit but you may have to modify the cab if you want it to sit lower on there it does feel it does feel like it's a wider oh the chassis sticks out a bit wider yeah the wheel will stick out about the same as when it's the off-road version all right. So, time to answer the other, the opposite question: Can it fit on any of the other frames? This is my drift variant of the thirty-four. Yeah, it's the thirty-four frame. So the wheelbase is a bit off, but we know what the standard wheelbase is but with the body I believe the rear end and the frame will happily fit in there what will need to be done which I'll happily do is 3d print some brackets there and there to mount the bed actually that sits a lot lower that's that's like that's like it's just slammed for drifting right there and then for the cab I don't know if it's the cab which will be needing modified yeah it will be so it looks like all this internal bit here will possibly be needing to be chopped out to get it to sit on so it possibly may need a fully 3D printed bracket here to make it work. But if you're wanting to make it for an off-roader, I say you would get the clearance for the stock wheels on it. And comparing, comparison, I don't even know where that just fell. For the comparison to like put the stock wheels in, that looks all right, you get clearance on the bed. Wheel arches, yeah, and that may rub a little bit. Depends if you really jack it up a little bit. So, comparison between the stock tires on it and these. These tires are really, really grippy. I can tell you that much. So if you've got a fast build, I would recommend picking up a set of these if WPL do start selling them separate. Because I've got a mud truck C44 build. Here it is. Now the body's fallen off it. But this, with these tires on, can hit up to about 15 miles an hour in high gear. So, if you're building a drag race car or something which requires grip, I would really recommend getting yourself a set of them wheels. So, like I said, for grip, giving it a push, it barely wants to move.